morning. Good morning, everyone. This is a uh, really special day, dedication of uh, babies. And uh, the way this works is um, uh, basically it's a lot like a wedding. And we're going to bring the parents and the children up here. Um, and uh, we're going to go through a series of statements and the, the parents then agree to those statements. And then you, the church, that you will be... Uh, given a series of statements, and uh, then you have the opportunity to, uh, to agree to those as well, and then we will say prayers over the parents and the children. So, am I there now? Good. I'm good. All right. Um, well, first we'll begin by calling up the parents and the children. I'd like to uh, bring up Cassie with Cohen. There we go. Oh, I love it. And then Lewis and Felicia with Roman. Everybody's loaned out their kids this morning. And then I'm going to jointly call up uh, Buck and Alyssa with Emily and bring forward Harley and Allison. No worries. Okay. <clears throat> Parents, God has entrusted you with raising his child. Raising a child of God is a big undertaking. According to God's word, this child is made in God's own image, according to Genesis chapter 2. This child has been well known by God long before you knew of its existence, according to Jeremiah chapter 1. Christ died for this child, according to John 3.16. Christ has commanded this child to love him and live for his people, according to Matthew 22. This child has been commissioned to go into the world and baptize nations, according to Matthew 28. This child is supposed to grow up and storm the gates of hell, according to Matthew 16. This child is to seek wisdom through it, though it cost him or her everything, according to Proverbs 4. To lead this child into such a task, you parents must instill discipline, according to Proverbs 23. Show them love, according to Matthew 7. Show Christ, according to your relationship, especially marriage, Ephesians 5. Be quick to confess your own sins, 1 John 1. Not be harsh, according to Ephesians 6. Be prepared to answer questions, according to 1 Timothy 4. And last, obey Christ's commands, Romans 6 and Matthew 28. So this is where we do the marriage vows. <laughs> Parents, do you accept this responsibility given to you by God? Okay, we can do the wave too, I guess. Uh, very good. Okay, church, that would be you. You are the bride of Christ and spiritual siblings of these parents. Any addition to their family is an addition to your family. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 5, 8, that those who won't care for the relatives, especially those in their own household, have denied the true faith. Such people are worse than unbelievers. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is much the same in our spiritual family, Galatians 6.10. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially those in the family of faith. Three, the Bible also says that we are to aid in lifting up someone in a hard time. Rest assured, these children will have hard times. Will have hard times. And they will benefit from a faith family with their best interest in mind. Galatians 6, 1 through 3. Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Share each other's burdens 
In this way, obey the law of Christ. Your turn. Church, do you accept this responsibility given to you by God? Yes. Very good. Um, I will, at this point, ask uh, James uh, to come up and, and say a prayer for the parents. And then Gina will come up after that and say a prayer for the children. Please join us in prayer with you, uh, for these parents. Dear God, we just ask that you watch over these parents as they are, are uh, trying to raise these kids up in a, in a godly manner, in a, in a godly environment, that you just uh, help them to do that in any way possible. Just let them know that they are uh, there is a whole church body here to lean on to help them to do that. And we just ask that you lead them, these parents in in the way that, that they need to be led to, to raise these kids up that will be uh, also end up be members of a church body somewhere that your church body that they uh, that they point these children in the right direction to do that and, and that they take them and lead them in those directions amen Gene, yeah. you want to come up and say the prayer for the kids Daddy God, we thank you so much for this day, and we thank you for these precious parents that bring their children to you. Father God, we ask your blessings upon these children all the days of their life. May they hunger and thirst after you, Jesus, and may they be protected by your angels and your care. Father God, we pray that they will search for you and that they will know you in the fullest, Lord. We pray that you will Fill them with your spirit, and they will walk with you, and that they will know you and never have to stray from you. Father God, we ask your blessings upon these children. In your name we pray. Amen. Parents, you're dismissed. Thank you so much. Good and sweet, very important. Uh, we we love we love children here, and uh, we we love parents who love children. And so, parents, remember that always that we are here to help you, uh, never to condemn, but always to help you. There is safety in coming to your family for help. Okay. Uh, so, switching gears just a little bit this morning, uh, if we have any veterans in the service this morning, uh, would you please stand up so that we can recognize you, veterans? in service this morning. Thank you guys for your service. We honor you this morning. Thank you. It is because of you that we can be here today, so thank you. Uh, today is a special day, not only because we are doing baby dedication, but uh, because finally, I am an expert in the field that we are talking about today, okay? Uh, this is my wheelhouse. <laughs> This is what my wife has said. You are finally the man for the job. So today we're talking about crazy. I have my PhD in crazy. And I'm okay with admitting that because I'm a pastor and I know you all's darkest, dirtiest secrets. And I know you're crazy too. So we're all a little bit crazy. I'm glad to be here with you today. Uh, and crazy is not necessarily bad because your brand of crazy may just be what brings somebody else to this crazy place. And we will enter into the kingdom of heaven together, okay? So it's just harnessing that crazy, okay? Every one of us, every one of us, and we are one click off of heading the wrong direction, right? And so we want to help you be able to control that. So we want to talk for the next few weeks about how to deal with crazy uh, because we all have it in our lives. But before we can go on and begin to deal with the crazy people in our lives and the crazy things in our lives, we've got to deal with the craziest thing of all, ourselves. So most of you guys can uh, identify with me when I say that I don't need any enemies, I've got myself. Can I get an uh-huh? Something. So come on. Love it. Love it. Because we're all together in this. I don't need any enemies. I've got myself. 
I am my own worst enemy. I am a new shade of crazy. I will throw this out there, and you guys can listen to me after this or not, but when I skip into, I, and I don't get angry, I don't have an anger problem. I just want you guys to know the pastor's up here saying, I don't have an anger problem. I skip anger. Anger's somewhere in the middle. I go straight to rage, okay? And so, in, in, in rage, I want you guys to know that this is the man speaking to you. I foam at the mouth like I have rabies, okay? I get mad, and I literally will foam at the mouth, okay? My wife, let me tell you how crazy she is. I'm not that crazy, see? I know how to control it. But you guys are nuts. You've told me stories, and you're just as nuts as I am. But we can control this. This can get harnessed for the good of the Lord, okay? Now, you aren't alone in crazy. Remember that. But we've got to talk about it. We've got to talk about your crazy so that we can use your crazy for the kingdom of God and crazy doesn't control your life. Alright? So let's get started on this. The first thing we've got to do, number one, there is some prerequisite knowledge that we've got to get going here. I, I've got a lot of scripture to share with you guys, uh, but, but there's, there, there are two things that we've got to run through quickly uh, that are very practical. So number one, there's some knowledge we all have to know. I remember when I was in, uh, when I was in college, I got married very young, and uh, I, don't, I don't regret that at all. Some of you are like, shut up, my kids are listening. I don't regret it at all. It was fantastic. Uh, but I had a lot of young men come to me early, and they're going, I think it's time, man. I want to marry her, but she doesn't deserve me. You don't understand. And I cannot tell you how many young men came to me and said, she is exactly what I want, but she can't want me. She doesn't know the real me yet. She hasn't seen me, you know. Go crazy. And, and the first guy, you know, he's talking to me as if I don't know what he's talking about. I'm like, do you know who you're talking to? I invented crazy, right? And, and then the next guy, and the next guy. And, and it, it, it dawned on me eventually, we're all a little bit nuts. And praise God that we are, because that makes life fun. When it happens to you, right? Not when it happens to me. I laugh at your stuff. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Listen to this. Therefore, if anyone, was in, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and see, the new has come. See, God knew you were nuts when he made you. <laughs> right? God knew you were going to be crazy. And he knew you were a hopeless case. That's why he said, if you'll come to me, I'll make you a new creation. And we need that. Somebody, uh-huh, amen, something. We need that. We need to be made a new creation. Because this version, the old version of myself, the sinful version, the, 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 the walking in the flesh version of myself, it's not a lot of good raw material to work with. <laughs> I needed something new. Jesus provides that, okay? So, we all have to have that. We all have to have that. Don't worry about you. Don't worry about your raw material. He says, no, 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 no. I made you. God didn't make a mistake when he made you. I know that you got to, yeah, yeah, it's funny when you say it, Pastor. Guess what? I'm just telling you the funny stuff. We've got that embarrassing, crazy stuff. We all have it. Jesus knew exactly what he was doing when he created you. Okay? He wants to make you a new creation when you submit to him. So, you're not a lost cause. You're not hopeless. In fact, there is hope this morning because you're in the right place. You are in a place where everyone is just as crazy as you. But we made sure of it by making me the leader. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I hadn't even had a Red Bull this morning. Okay, now, number, number, uh, no, number B. We've got to take responsibility. First of all, uh, A was, I'm sorry, back there on the computer. Love you. I got you. Told you. Sin makes us crazy. B is this. You've got to take responsibility for your health. Sometimes there's a practical side 
to going nuts. Okay? I, and listen to the pastor say that, all right? I'm not looking for a demon behind every bush. Sometimes there's a practical side, all right? I was sick this week, okay? I normally work out every day. I was sick and begin to get a little better, but not quite good enough to work out. And then by the time Friday rolls around, like all my energy, that's a lot of energy. All my energy had like balled up, man, and I was going crazy. I needed to exercise. There's a practical side to being crazy, okay? So don't, don't throw away practical application because you're a Christian. Please, we've got enough people doing that. Don't do that. Don't throw away practical. God gave you a brain. Take responsibility for your health, okay? You're happier when you feel better, okay? You are more sane. If you get eight hours of sleep, You'd be amazed at how much better your marriage will get. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes we just got to do the practical things. Listen to this. I just, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm pulling this one out of the Bible. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 7. When people come to me for counseling a lot, we start with the practical stuff. Are you getting enough exercise? Are you eating healthy? Are you uh, getting enough sleep? And I always throw this one out there too. Uh, this is from my psychology background. Are you getting enough sunlight? Some of you don't know this is even in the Bible, but Ecclesiastes 11, 7. Light is sweet and it is pleasing for the eyes to see the sun. Pastor, I'm depressed. You haven't been out of the house in a month. Let's mosey on outdoors and get a little sunlight. Let's start with the practical, okay? So that was, that was B, okay? So sin makes us all crazy. Take responsibility for your health. Now, we're going on to number two. Okay, growing problems tend to have a spiritual root. I didn't say always. I'm not making a blanket sweep statement. We're not just covering everything up under this. But growing problems tend to have a spiritual root. So if your crazy is growing, <laughs> we've all got it. If it's been growing lately and you're like, look, nobody can stand to be around me. I can't stand to be around me. This is a growing problem. There tends to be a spiritual root to this problem. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil spiritual forces in the heavens. There is a spiritual root. And not always, sometimes you're just sick. I don't mean like you're sick, like you're sick. I mean like, like something's wrong. You know what I'm saying. I saw you laughing at me. Sometimes you just don't feel well. Sometimes you just need sleep. Sometimes you need to mosey on outdoors, all right? Sometimes we need to consult a physician. I'm not taking away from any of those things, but sometimes there's a spiritual root. I'll, I'll give you guys a story. I've told a few of you this. I don't tell these stories a lot because you guys look at me like I'm crazy, but I preface today with I'm crazy, so take this as you will. I am not prone to depression. It's just not really part of me. Uh, when Elaine and I moved to Ranger and we planted this church, we kind of had a timeline. Hey, this is how it's going to work. Everybody, guys, everybody said, you guys are crazy. This is never going to work in Ranger. And we said we were new. We were crazy long before you came into the picture. Ha <laughs> ha, right? And so we didn't care. We came anyways. And so we came and sure enough, everything was Working exactly like we thought it would work. When does that ever happen? And the strangest thing was, I got so depressed. That's not like me. And so I thought, man, I can beat this. And I know, I mean, I advise people. I counsel people. I know the Word of God. And, and man, I'm, I'm going through Philippians chapter 4. You guys write that down on your hand, Philippians chapter 4. That's your homework for tonight. I write, I'm, I'm reading Philippians chapter 4. I'm telling myself all the things that I need to know. But something is just a weight. And as much as I try to stand up, it just brings me back down. And I, I, I called a friend of mine finally. And I said, man, I don't know what to do. I am Depressed. First time I had even spoken the words. I didn't even want to speak the word. Anybody, if you don't raise your hand. If you've been depressed before, you guys can just like wink at me so that everybody doesn't see. Every one of us in here, you've had something, right? We've been depressed, and you know what it's like. It's just like it's hard to get over it because you don't even want to get over it. Like I'm so depressed, I want to be depressed because I deserve to be depressed, right? It's just. And so I call, I call my friend. I'm like, I can't do this, man. We gotta, we gotta be moving. We gotta win people to the kingdom of heaven. 
And I can't do it in this state. So I call a friend of mine uh, who, who, who knows the Lord very well. And I said, man, something is wrong. I'm so depressed. And he said, that is spiritual. It's demonic. I'm like, dude, I knew I shouldn't have called you. You're nuts. <laughs> I said, and I told him on the phone. I'm like, hey, I'm a child of God, man. Satan can't get to me. He said, you don't understand. It's not a possession. You're not demon possessed. You're oppressed. There's something over you. There's something looming over you. There's something trying to get to you. And, and, and it's there. And so I, I, I wrote the dude off. I mean, I respect him. I love him. But really, he didn't know what he was talking about. So I write the dude off. And later that day, I just am in, in my office. I'm trying to get stuff done. And I'm like, I hate life. The joy of the Lord is gone. What is going on? And so I'm over at the, the BSM building. You guys know that we started over there. It holds 40 people. And we threw 87 people into it. And luckily... We didn't know anybody in the fire department at that time. <laughs> um, so we, I, I'm in that building, and I just hit my knees. Man, I'm in the middle of the building. I just hit my knees, and I said, God, I, I don't even agree with this theology. So forgive me if I'm wrong. But then I just began to speak. And I said, depression, in the name of Jesus, you leave me. And I hear, <laughs> I'm not making this up, okay? Something hit the double glass doors, and it didn't like hit like a gust of wind. It hit from the inside going outside. I told you this is why I don't tell a story. You're all looking at me like I'm nuts. Like, this is not me. I, I grew up in a Baptist church. Like, you don't do, you kick the people out with that story, right? So something hit the doors, and boom! I mean, it, and I sit there, and like the hair on the back of my neck raises, and I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> I, I, I need you or I need you at this point. Like, you got to give me ninja skills or something because some weird just happened. And so I sat there in silence for a minute. I'm like, no, 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 no. There's a window open. It doesn't have windows. There's only one other door. And I look and it's locked. I waited. Mississippi 45, 46. No other sound. It didn't replicate. Nothing else happened. And I, I finally stood up. And you guess what happened next? I was smiling. And if you've ever worked with me, God forbid you ever have to work with me, I sing while I work. I can't sing a lick. I don't care. But I'd go back into my office and I'd found myself smiling and I'm working along and I look up and I'm singing. It was gone. There tends to be a spiritual route to a growing problem. I'm not, everybody's not going to walk out of here today and be like, debt in the name of Jesus, right? <laughs> like, it doesn't always work just like that. There's some practical application. Don't throw away logic. God has given you a brain. But I'm telling you, Satan is like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. He will see which brain the crazy you are, and he'll throw it on, brother. Friend of mine in college, man, he got saved and he committed himself to Jesus. And he, man, he had to kick pornography. And he calls me one day and he's just foaming mad, man. He's like, this is ridiculous. I said, Kyle, what's going on, bro? What? He's like, man, this is the second time this week that they've sent some random stranger's Playboy magazine into my mailbox. This has never happened to me in my life. But the week that I'm going to kick this just so happens, right? Satan will find your brand. He'll find what you struggle with. And dude, he will throw it on. There tends to be a spiritual root to a growing problem. Identify it. And then we can take it to Jesus. What does that look like? I'm glad you asked. Step three. Practical application for overcoming crazy. There's a title for you. Here's what we deal with. Identif identity. Problems with confession, gossip, worry, addiction, anger, pride, self-control. We can pretty much wrap everything up into those. A good friend of mine said that if you could take all the sins and put them into one, pride would be the trunk of a tree and all the other sins would be a branch off of that. Maybe, maybe. Problem is, I don't struggle with pride, so... <laughs> Hole in the theory. I know what you're saying. Okay, Pastor, you're about to say that the Bible 
is the answer for everybody's problems. If that's the case, why do we still all have our problems? But easy, because we don't read the Bible. Right? Let me tell you, let, let, let me give you an example. I have the answer for weight gain. Diet and exercise. We've always had the answer. But these pants are a little bit snug this morning, you know what I'm saying? Just because we got the answer doesn't mean that we are applying. I'm telling you, the Bible is phenomenal. The wisdom of God that is in there is incredible. It is life changing. I can give you story after story starting with mine, but the Bible has the right answers. Prove it. Okay, go home and read your Bible. I'm glad you asked that. I've got something for you. I, I, I cannot give you... I was teaching a class one time and a young man was arguing with me about this. It just so happens uh, the rest of the people who were in the class We'd been teaching for a while, and, and the main focus was, that, hey, if you will jump into the Bible and begin to take the words of God and apply them into your life, it would be life-changing. And this young man, and we're, we're, in, we're in college, and he's like, I just don't think, you know, and he's, the Bible this, the Bible this, the Bible this. So a buddy of mine, I mean, this guy is, he makes rednecks look white-collar, okay? And this guy stood up, and he threw his keys on the table. He said, I can solve this. You go home and read your Bible. If it doesn't change your life, and you have my truck. He meant it with all of his heart. Now the young man who was talking with us was, was struggling with massive anxiety, depression, just a whole list of things. And guess what he went home and did? Nothing. Now, we could cast stones at him, <laughs> but we've done the same thing. We even believe it. Like, Pastor, I believe you. Yeah, Bible's good. Go home and read. Now, I got stuff to do telling you the word of God is powerful is living and active sharper than any double edged sword right useful for teaching rebuking correcting training in righteousness everything that you need is right there in the word of God oh I hope the pastor talks about what I'm going through today because man I need some relief from this don't wait for me I have no advice to give you that doesn't come from the Word of God anyways. I hope that you come here to be encouraged, but don't come here looking for the answers. You've got them in your hand all week long. This is a pep rally about what God has been doing in your life through the Word of God all week long. I believe in it that much. Read the Bible. Apply the Bible. The validity of the Bible lies in the success of its power over your life. Does that make sense? Well, I question. I'm not sure about the canonization. I'm not sure if the Song of Solomon is really supposed to be in the Bible. And I've got all the, I don't know about historical accuracy. I can, I can help you guys with this. And I've studied all those things. We can go debate it for a long time. And in the end, it will change nothing. You know what will change something? If you will take your Bible. If you don't have one, we have them by the door. We would love for you to take one. It's not a burden for us to give those to you. Please take one. If you'll take that Bible and go home, and for seven days, if you'll just open it up and pray, God, speak to me, and read until God speaks to you, all those questions will answer themselves. Somebody agree with me? All those questions will answer themselves. If I say, hey, I paid your light bill, write it on a, a post-it note and stick it on your front door. I paid your light bill. The pastor wouldn't pay my light bill. How do you find out? Go inside and flip the switch. If the lights come on, the note was valid. Read your Bible. And if you see God move powerfully inside of you, <gasps> It's valid. If nothing happens, you wasted five minutes of your Monday. B. B on your knees. Pray. Pray, pray, pray. Matthew 7, 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks 
finds and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What if, what if your faith in God is measured by your prayer life? Because the amount that you think God is in control is actually reflected by the amount of time that you go to the one in control and make your request. What if your faith were measured by your prayer life? By your time spent with God? You want me to read my Bible now? You want me to pray? Yes. Absolutely. I want you to wake up every morning, maybe even 30 minutes earlier. My wife says, "Uh uh-uh, I'm reading when I go to bed. I guess that works for her. I've got a few complaints about the way she's living life, but that works for her. She's in the nursery today. <laughs> she ain't waking up early. She's like, I, I, I don't even want to talk to Jesus in the morning. And I'm like, I've talked to you in the morning. Jesus probably don't want to talk to you in the morning. <laughs> She's not a morning person. I like to whistle. I don't know how our marriage works. But it's fantastic. <laughs> Everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. One who knocks, the door will be opened. I gotta get the crazy out of my life. Good. You came to the right person. Because I can get the crazy out? No. Because I, I know who you need to talk to. C. Practical application to overcome crazy. A. Read your Bible. B. Pray. C. Church. I know what you're thinking. You want a refund. I really came to church so he could tell me to come to church. Brilliant. I told you we were crazy. Hebrews 10, 4 through 5. And let us watch out for one another to provoke love and good works, not neglecting together together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other. And all the more as you see the day approaching. See, don't just go to church. Be the church. Man, sometimes... We are in such a desperate situation that it's completely valid for you just to come and soak up everything you can. I get that. But don't stay there. Don't stay in church. Move on to being church. Because that is where God will move in and through you. Check out Ephesians 2, 19 through 20. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. You are fellows. You are members. You are brothers and sisters. Okay, Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus Himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In Him you are also being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. The saints, the Christians, not just in this church, not just in this county, but all over the world, are being put together like building stones, making a holy temple for the living God. Jump in there and complete the temple. You will lack purpose until you jump in as a building block. God made you for just the right size, right? Why did He make me that special kind of crazy? Because I had a gap in this stone wall and I needed a weird looking rock to stick in there. And it's going to fit perfectly. And you are that rock. Jump in as soon as you can. The Bible says spur one another on to loving good deeds. Encourage. We need one another. It should be... This sounds really preachy and really traditional. I get that. But it's always been true. It's why we've traditionally said it. It's not just that I will go to church. It's I want to. I need to. Because you don't understand, I've got a brother in need. I've got a sister in need. They need me to encourage them. And then, oh man, I'm encouraged every time that I go. This is a pep rally for what God has been doing in your life all week long. And you've been reading the Word of God and He has something to show you. And God has taught you something that pulled you out of depression. And then you can see it. Man, when, when, when I came to Ranger, I didn't know a lot about... Um, you guys know Pastor uh, Dusty Purvis who, who was up here. Uh, Dusty's been bad boy for a long time, right? And so Dusty's done a lot of things that I have not done. And so Dusty can pick up on things, and he never really tells me until afterwards, uh, but somebody will come to Dusty and myself, and 
oh, Pastor, I'm struggling with this. And he'll be like, I knew. I saw that. He's been there. He's seen that. He's done that. So he sees it. I'm totally oblivious. Like, you're kidding me, right? <laughs> Dusty's like, I could see that one in your eyes, right? And so he never tells me anything. I wish you'd gossip a little more, Dusty, by the way. But he, he never tells me until after, but he sees it. You guys have been through some stuff. And so after you've been through that de depression, I keep picking on that this morning. Maybe that's for somebody. But after you've been through those seasons of hatred and you've got to come out with forgiveness, whatever it may be, you see somebody in that. And so through love and through encouragement, we begin to build one another up. And hopefully we come and somebody sees that in us and they begin to encourage and build us up. And it becomes not just I'll go to church. I can't wait to get there. I need it. I thrive on it. A, B, C. Read your Bible, pray, go to church. Maybe you could remember it like this. A, B, C. Apply the Bible. A, apply the Bible. Anybody with me on that one? It works. A, apply the Bible. B, on your knees. See what I did again there? And C is church. I had nothing created for that one. It's just church. Okay? Read the Bible, pray, and be the church. Pastor? Heard that my whole life. Thanks. I've already heard it. Have you done it? Let me tell you this, and I will tell you this confidently to any man, to any woman who comes up to tell me differently or to tell you differently. Anybody who tells you anything different will lead you into the kingdom of God is giving you a bill of sale, man. Is giving you something that is absolutely false. Is telling you something that is wicked. This is how God chooses to speak to His people. Are there more ways? Dude, I've seen dreams. I've seen visions. I've seen, I've seen all of those things. But you know what works every time? Reading the Bible, praying, going to church. If you want to get away from that, man, you're missing the best parts. Worship team, I want you guys to go ahead and come up. Uh, I, 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 was, I was short today for time. But this is life-giving information. It is simple. It is simple, but it works. It's simple, but it works. In fact, every topic that we go through, if you'll notice, the answer to everything is, have you been in your Bible? Have you been speaking to Jesus? Have you been fellowshipping with people who are going to bring you up instead of tear you down? It's the answer every time. Sweet, I can stop coming to church. Well, we dig a little deeper sometimes than just that. But this is my challenge to you guys. Go home and read until you've read. How long does that take? I don't know. Don't be in a hurry. Ask God to speak to you. Open your Bible and read until you get something out of it. You, you may be done in five minutes. It may take you 45 minutes. Read until you've read. Get on your knees and pray until you've prayed. How long does that take? I don't know. At what point did you feel like you met with God? Trust me, you'll know. You know how they told you one day when you buy that special ring because you meet that special someone, you'll just know? Kind of like that. You'll know when you met with God. And then find a church and plug in. Go to church until you become the church. Father, we love you. I pray, Lord, that such a simple message will be received. God, most everything that you came to the earth to tell us wasn't really very complicated. And we miss it. It's hard, God. It's hard. God, I know from personal experience, sometimes I'm, I'm so busy doing stuff that's for you. I don't have time to read. Anytime that I sit down and begin to pray to you, my mind just wanders for tons of stuff, and it's not bad stuff. But it's just, I, I just can't, can't even focus to pray. God, I just assume that's the way it goes for everybody in here, so I'm just going to pray. Father, that you will intervene 
in every one of these prayer times this week. And meet with us supernaturally, Father. So much so that we just want to hide because we have experienced the presence of the living God. And when we open our word, Father, I, I, I pray that you will speak to us so clearly that we can't wait to call somebody and say, I have heard from God. And we begin to share life-changing, life-giving information straight from your word. And let us love one another and spur one another on the good deeds. Love and good deeds in Jesus' name. So maybe, maybe, I know the simple guys, maybe through the power of the Holy Spirit you are inspired to go home and really take a crack at opening up my Bible and reading it. Let me just give you a little advice from the pastor here. Don't start in Genesis and try to go all the way through Revelation. There is a 99.9% .9 chance that you will become depressed in the book of Leviticus. <laughs> One day. One day you'll need to knock out Leviticus just so you can tell Jesus, I did it. What you got now, right? Today's not that day. Halfway through your Bible, actually about two-thirds of the way through your Bible, you're going to find the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you've never read the Bible before, I want you to open up to the book of John. I want you to read that first. If you've read the book of John, you accept all this Christianity stuff, and you wonder, do I really... Do I, like, am I in this deal? Go to the back of the Bible, and there's a short book called 1 John. Okay? So there's John, and then there's 1 John. There's a difference. And I want you to read 1 John. That is the manuscript for salvation. You read that, you answer the questions that it asks you, and you will know if you are a child of God or not. If you've moved on past that point, you go to the letters starting with Romans, ending with Hebrews, and you read those letters that were letters to the church telling them how to act, how to behave, how to reflect Jesus, and you do everything that they say. There's my reading advice for you guys. So, in just a minute, the worship team will begin to play. People are going to come forward with baskets. If you are a believer in this place, part of the way that we worship is through our tithe and offering, so you can do that in the basket. Also, you can uh, go online, www.thewoodbridgechurch.com, and you can tithe uh, there as well. But when you came in, you were given a connection card. Please communicate with us on that. If, uh, if it is time for you to stop being a sissy and get baptized, next week is your week. Write that down in your connection card. Uh, we want you guys to come up and, and follow through with that next week. Anything that you have to communicate with us, prayer, whatever, you can do that on that connection card. Also, when service is over, the worship team will be up here. I will be up here. Please come up here. We would love to play with you guys. So you guys stand and worship.